Hey, Mark Shepard here. It's Saturday morning, the 25th of February. It's 13 degrees below zero. The, uh, the sun just started to come up and there was a beautiful, a beautiful peach pink moment, but it was fleeting, now it's gray. We had a thaw, but now we're back to some pretty frigid temperatures and I'm starting to think about the Sunday message. Welcome to Healing Pastures. This is a farm, but it's also a church. This is a spiritual calling that I have been pursuing all my life and that is to do my best to approach food in a different way, to use my talents, my abilities to turn the camera on and speak, my abilities to write songs, songs that are a good percentage of them about spiritual themes, like why are we here? We are spirits in bodies, not bodies with spirits. And I'm sitting here thinking, and I think a Sunday message might be trying to come through, so I'm just gonna let it let it flow and see where we see where we go with it. My dad, basically on the second of February, woke up with a pretty intense UTI. Uh, his urine was black and sludgy with blood and blood clots and very unhealthy stuff. So I took him to the hospital and uh, they immediately got him on intravenous antibiotics, which we're grateful for the appropriate use of antibiotics. Um, and that weekend while he was in the hospital, I decided to do something I'd been thinking about doing for a long time, and that was revisiting the carnivore diet. I experimented with the carnivore diet for about 30 days in 2018, and I got down to 210 pounds at that time, but I, I did a lot of cheats. Like, I ate carnivore during the week, but on the weekends I ate watermelon because it was summer. I ate corn on the cob because it was summer, <laughs> right? But I just felt like I had read so much and I'd watched so many videos of people having success with the carnivore diet. And as someone who produces meat, albeit I'm at the beginning of that stage, I'm just starting a farm. And we have, my dad and I have been eating mostly pork um, from our own animals and last week we harvested five sheep and my friend Corey who I collaborate with on the farm harvested a couple of steers so we, we have some beef we have some lamb we have some pork and I felt that it was a good time to start the carnivore diet and my dad who does nutrition research pretty much every day uh told me about this book, by uh, The Carnivore Code by Dr. Paul Saladino. And this book, Toxic Superfoods by Sally K. Norton. And in the process of reading them, it, it gave me the fuel. The, the arguments they make are pretty convincing. Plus, back in 2018, I saw an interview with Jordan Peterson on Joe Rogan, and I saw an interview with his daughter, Michaela Peterson, who had absolutely, absolutely gotten almost miraculous results by getting rid of all the plants and focusing, in Michaela Peterson's case, on beef or ruminant animals 
because ruminants have the ability to detoxify the plant foods that they eat. And I'll let you do your own research. Just go to YouTube, type in carnivore diet. There are a number of people who uh, are documenting their own journey. And then if you read the comments below those videos, hundreds upon hundreds of comments from people, yes, I tried this too. And it's helping, it's working. I've never felt better. And I had a moment yesterday, I think we're, we've are we been on it now three weeks. This might be the fourth week. But I had a moment yesterday after working all day when nothing hurt. Like no aches, no pains, no stiffness, no soreness. Nothing hurt. No no back stuff, no hip stuff, no leg stuff, no shoulder stuff. And I have also been stretching every single morning while I'm waiting for the, the water to boil for my coffee. I have been stretching every morning, so I think that helps. I have been pulling six five-gallon buckets of water to the cows and sheep and dogs almost every day in a sled that's helping and at this point I'm down to 203 pounds which I haven't seen probably in 30 years and I feel fabulous and the question is 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 this a wacky thing right all the things people talk about when I say yeah I'm doing the carnivore diet they go well what about your fiber and Paul uh was it Saladino what is it yeah, Paul Saladino in his book, The Carnivore Code, literally goes step by step through every kind of plant toxin that we are ingesting from all these wonderful plants that we've been told are superfoods. And I've been eating a lot of Swiss chard. Never liked spinach, but Swiss chard is very high in oxalic acid. And we were doing almond butter on wasa crackers for lunch a lot very high in oxalic acid and oxalic acid forms needle like crystals and I was told oh no the oxalic acid disappears when you cook it evidently not so to be willing to make a change to be willing to do some research and make a change these are qualities that my dad, Lewis Shepard, Lewis M. Shepard, has always pursued in his life. Now, granted, there are things he doesn't change. As all of us, there are things we don't change that maybe we could work on. There's things that I haven't changed that I could work on. But in the area of nutrition and health, my father, because he was an amputee, realized that if he didn't take care of his own health, by the time he got older, he would be a basket case. That's a direct quote. <laughs> so unlike his seven siblings, he focused intently, unceasingly, unwaveringly on nutrition. And so having him kind of set that precedent in my life I have trusted him to find new ways to do things. And he has always delivered. And even though I kind of heard about the carnivore diet first, he really got kind of dove into the research. And I will leave a bunch of links in the description below uh, so that you can just find some of the people that I find authoritative that I find worth listening to. Um, there's a Dr. Barry, uh, there's uh, Sean, Dr. Sean Baker, um, there's Michaela Peterson, and I think even Joe Rogan gave it a shot to see what it was like. And the thing is, the very first time I did it, I got good results even though I didn't do it perfectly. And as someone who sees the difference between meat bought in the grocery store that is feedlot meat that is 
grain fed and those grains have been sprayed with Roundup just to dry them at the end of harvest. I want meat that isn't filled with toxic pesticides. And one of these books, I forget which one, whether it was Saladino's book, Carnivore Code, or um, the uh, Toxic Superfood book, one of them talked about how the fact is that we overlook totally the amount of toxins chemicals, phytochemicals that we're being exposed to through our plant foods, natural chemicals that the plants have developed to use as pesticides. In fact, coffee, the caffeine in coffee is literally a phytopesticide. It's a plant pesticide used by the plant to protect itself from being eaten, right? And our neurology takes it as a stimulant. I'm not ready to quit coffee yet. At some point I might. But I have to share this. This is one of the foundations of this channel is that sharing my journey. It's a spiritual journey, but it's also a practical physical journey in an age when more and more people are stuck behind these screens. And the screens aren't horrible. They're not bad. The fact is that we can communicate with each other in ways that we've never done before. That a small voice, an individual person can speak his or her truth out into the world by way of YouTube, which is the only platform I really use at this point because I can only handle so much of the social media stuff. But YouTube, not perfect. But if you are focused on something that other people are concerned about, there is an audience. And mine is growing slowly, and I appreciate every one of you who actually watches all the way to the end. And by the way, if you do watch all the way to the end, I always try to give you a treat, a visual treat, an emotional treat at the end. And in every Sunday message, I try to connect the physical the practical, the spiritual, the artistic, the emotional, the intellectual, all of these threads that cause us to experience life as a rich and rewarding experience rather than a veil of tears, a path of pain. And yes, there is pain, there is suffering. But if we actually are willing to learn something and make a change and then test it in our own lives, the possibilities are limitless. So dad and I really got the message that our farming, our food system is fragile. I'm not saying it's broken, but it could be broken very easily by any world event that interrupted the supply of oil, that anything that stopped the trucks from filling up our grocery stores, and by the de degradation of our land from the bare dirt farming practices. And vegetarians and vegans have rightly criticized the way we raise meat in this country. You know, the, the concentrated agricultural feeding operations or CAFOs are very efficient and allow the price to be cheap. And there's something to be said for that. However, the grains that are fed to our animals are raised with huge amounts of fertilizers and pesticides on bare dirt that blows away that runs off the land, the soil has been degraded. And so one of my missions as a spiritual person is in my own small way to take care of the soil, the soil microbes, the grasses, the perennial plants that support the animals that then support us. And if you're open-minded, it 
makes sense. If you want to lose weight, it makes sense. If you have autoimmune issues, it makes sense to check out a carnivore diet. You can start with grocery store meat. While my dad was in the hospital, I went to the grocery store. I got some lamb, which came from Australia. I got some beef. I don't know where that came from. Uh, this was before we got uh, Corey's beef in. Because I just wanted to try it. And I wanted something that felt nourishing and healthy. And uh, we had used up most of our fruits and vegetables. And I'm like, yeah, this is a good time to try it. So I did... And I feel fabulous. And if you don't feel fabulous, and you've been eating all the foods that you've been told are healthy, but you don't feel healthy, you owe it to yourself to try this. Now, I'd love it if you would use my meat, if you would find a local farmer and, and choose regeneratively grown organic meat. Don't know if you can do that or not. That's that's where I'm going with this whole project. So thank you for sticking with me. This is a little bit longer than I normally do my Sunday message, but I feel that it was important. So remember to check the links below the description and I'll show you some of the videos I've been watching. And I'm going to leave you with a song. Not sure what song it'll be yet, but I'll figure that out hopefully by Sunday morning before I release this. And there will be an update with my beloved friends, the animals. And um, thank you so much for watching. This is the point where I send out prayers. I send out prayers to those who are struggling with their health, to those, by the way, my dad is doing very, very well. He's home, he's healthy, all systems are go. He got great care from his urologist, great care from the Potsdam Canton Hospital, sort of. <laughs> That's a whole other story for another day. And his spirits are good. And I'm very hopeful that he will be with us for many more years to come as we pursue this next level of eating to support our health. So again, prayers and appreciation to those who have sent prayers to us, prayers to my neighbors, prayers to my community, prayers to those who long for connection, who don't know where to find it, who long for more than just a digital connection, a virtual connection. Here at Healing Pastures, we are working diligently on getting to the point where we can begin to do things in person, uh, where we can have worship services that are basically, we get together, we share food, we sing together. I do the Sunday message then live in front of a congregation. And then we finish up with dessert, maybe on a Saturday night. That's the vision that I have. Because I don't, I don't want to be like other churches. And I don't, I want to, I want to, I think Saturday night, that's the original Sabbath, Saturday. And I just want to honor it. And we're going to start once a month and then maybe eventually go once a week. But in the meantime, I'm starting a farm and the farm is starting to support us food wise. And I, I'm so glad that you're part of this journey and I really appreciate you your attention if you haven't yet subscribed please subscribe please leave a comment below please give it a thumbs up please share this with somebody who you talk to about deep stuff so that's it for this message we'll see if i use it i think i will we'll see it's a little long but i appreciate you peace love grooviness amen so I decided to use the song I used last week, but there's a difference. I added drums. I added the Irish Bowron drum. I added a shaker. I added vocal harmonies. I added piano. I still need to add bass so it's not done, but here is the song I'm now calling Radio.
just radio. We are radio towers people and we're constantly sending and receiving and I hope you receive this well and hope I send it at the right way at the right time for you to experience wonder, bliss, and good things. Here we go. Here's the song.
radio There you go. Yes, good boy. Right like that. Yes. Good boy. That's it. <laughs> you're walking a little. <laughs> oh, you're going to fall over. Sorry, you got to pay attention. Oh, yes. Are you a good girl? Are you a good girl? Huh? Good. I'm going to put a leash on you guys. But I gotta get your water. And it's like 12 degrees. And here's a bunch of pigs. Robotomy, the queen, is in the back. And we have the two girls. And we have the three boys. Historic moment our first lamb. First taste of our first lamb. Mm -hmm. So good? Good. Good. Little salt, little help. Mmm. That's as good as any lamb I've gotten from Australia.